What if you wanted to play EU4, but Voltaire, again, said... Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're gonna be checking out Voltaire's Nightmare 2, a mod for EU4. Before we begin, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy this video. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it would really mean a lot. Let's get started. Now, last week I covered a mod called Voltaire's New Nightmare, and that was a mod which had the most accurate depiction of the HRE in EU4 so far with 600 plus nations in and around the HRE. So not only did it have the HRE, but it also had all of North Italy along with the Pope, Venice and all the nations that aren't in the HRE in 1444. Now in this mod, the HRE isn't as detailed. Of course, as you can see, it's still very, very detailed, but it doesn't compare to Voltaire's new nightmare, which had thousands and thousands of provinces, exclaves, enclaves. But what this mod does have is all of Europe well almost all of Europe and more so as we can see it's not just the HRE we have almost everything apart from northern Scandinavia but we also have the North African Maghrebi nations as well as the Mamluks we have the Ottomans right here in Anatolia the hordes over here the Russian nations some nations over here and this mod doesn't add details and realism just to the HRE region but to everything we can see on the map so let's dive into a region and see the details. First we're going to the Iberian Peninsula because it seems like the area which has changed the least upon first look but actually it has changed quite a lot so let's take a look. Obviously the first thing you guys might notice is that Granada is green and all of these nations of course we know of Portugal, Castile, Navarra, Aragon and Granada. Zooming into Portugal we can immediately see the details in the provinces and how many more new provinces there are. So this is their capital of Lisbon, obviously. We can see the tiny province of Ceuta down here, which is in Africa, of course. And here's Granada. Their borders are obviously depicted way more accurately, with quite a lot of impassable terrain being present in the map also. So of course, these are big mountain ranges that would be impassable. And Castile does have a different flag in this mod, as you can see here. Granada has the same one, along with Portugal and Aragon and Navarra. And here is Castile's capital of Toledo. It's a 16 dev province. It produces iron and can produce steel. So this is a trade good, of course, that is added for this mod. And here we can see the trade nodes in Iberia. So of course, as you know, Iberia only has two trade nodes, which are the trade nodes of Seville and Valencia over here. Now here it has six and it's much more detailed as you can see. And here we can see the trade goods map mode with uh, lots of trade goods that aren't present in EU4. So we have cheese, marble, olives, copper, tin, bananas even, spices, pepper, and many, many other trade goods. Castile does still start with King Juan de Tastamara and the 000 Enrique, which is hilarious. And here we can see Aragon and all their provinces, so the detail is immense. Oh, and we have two more countries here, which I actually didn't notice. So we have Palars. This is a county. Now, I've personally never heard of this county, so sorry if anyone from here is watching. And of course, we have Andorra. We all know Andorra as one of Europe's micro nations that still exists to this day. Its territory pretty much unchanged. And and I'm glad to see that they are represented in this mod. We can see a little border gore here. This province has an exclave in this province. So this is a sign of things to come for South Germany at least. And that's pretty much it for Iberia. Going into France and we can see all their subjects now. Now we can see their vassal swarm here but it's depicted much more accurately. And with a lot of their subjects which aren't present in EU4. So we have Albret, Armagnac is in the game. I'm not going to try and pronounce this one. Narbonne, Orange, Sancerre, Bourbon and all all of these other guys and if we go into the province of Paris it's right here as we can see a 22 dev province which produces cloth now this is 1.30.6 and not 1.31 so this mod doesn't work with Leviathan but it will get updated so that's why we have no monuments and here we can see England's holdings in the north of France 
as well as the Channel Islands. And we have Brittany right here, along with some subjects of theirs. So they have three subjects in this mod. And we can see England's South French holdings right here, which are separated in this mod much more accurately. In EU4, as you know, there are two provinces which are connected. And here we can see the Pope, who has two provinces right here, Avignon and this other province. And Provence is right here, at least their southern portion. In this mod, Provence doesn't have any land over here. But they do have the Duchy of Anjou, who is in a personal union with Provence. And we also don't have Provence's territories over here, but instead we have the Duchy of Bar, who is under their personal union, as well as Lorraine. And those are their three subjects. This is already part of the HRE. We can also see Burgundy depicted much more accurately. And if we go into the Imperial map mode, we can see the provinces of Burgundy, which are and aren't part of the Empire. This is how the trade situation in France looks. So we have all these trade nodes right here, very detailed, as you can see, lots of centers of trade. And going into the regions map mode, which I didn't show for Iberia, we can see all the different regions of Iberia. So we have the two parts of Portugal, we have Castile, and Lyon, we have Extremadura, La Mancha, Andalusia, all the regions of Aragon as well as the Balearic Islands and we can also see the regions in France. We have Ile de France, Normandy, all the historic regions and all they're pretty much named the same way today all the way up to Alsace. As you can see the detail is immense. Going over to Italy, another region which might seem familiar at first glance but when we zoom in we will truly see the detail. So let's start off with Sardinia right here. So of course as you know Aragon does hold this island. In vanilla eu4 but we also have arborea which isn't present in eu4 and isn't a subject of anyone so an independent nation as well as this province right here which is obviously part of genoa and we can see corsica here which is of course under genoa and some new nations over here such as Onelia, Asti, Binale, Monfrat is in U4 of course. And we do have some Portugal already going on over here as well as the county of Monaco which we all know is another microstate in Europe today. Moving on we have Milan right here. They have some Portugal due to lakes of course not due to provinces. And we have Luca. We all know it as well as these two other nations which aren't in U4. And we have Modena and some other tiny nations over here as well as Mantua. Mantua is present in U4. Here we have Florence of course one of the best nations to play tall as well as Siena and some other smaller nations over here. The island of Elba of course very famous. And what I am interested in is if the Pope still has a vassal swarm in this mod as well as Voltaire's new nightmare. And actually they don't. So they don't have any subjects in this mod. This is basically the Pope and they do have cores on all of these nations over here. So they don't have a vassal swarm in this mod, but they should very quickly be able to consolidate all their lands due to them starting with cores on all of them. Naples pretty much unchanged except this province of Benevento I think it's called which is a part of the papacy. Now this province isn't in you for the devs have said because it would be very weird to give the Pope an exclave in Naples and it would lead to some bad things happening pretty much. And of course we have Sicily, we have Malta right here, all of these tiny islands which are a part of Aragon as well as this island right here. So maybe if this province was present in vanilla U4 it would make invasions into Tunis much more easy. And this is the regions map mode of Italy as we can see we have a Puglia. We have Trinacria right here, which I thought would be named Sicily to be honest, and the rest of them we know. Venice is an end note in this mod, but interestingly Genoa isn't an end note, so Genoa can flow into Florence and then further into Venice. Going over into the HRE, and of course I will not cover this region too much because we covered it in Voltaire's New Nightmare, but we can already see the Borgor and I'm already starting to regret once again reviewing such a cursed, but at the same time blessed mod. So we can see all these nations over here, not as accurately depicted as in Voltaire's New Nightmare, but definitely still very accurate. As we can see, we have all the Bavarian nations right here, of course you know them. Landshut, Munich, and in the Imperial map mode we can see all the electors, as well as Styria. Styria is once again the emperor in this version, and all the free cities down here in southern Germany. If we go into the HRE interface, we can see the emperor, the electors of course, the 68 free cities, and 274 princes, so definitely a lot more than vanilla. U4. The Swiss Confederation doesn't seem to be present in this mod so basically in Voltaire's New Nightmare there was a sort of a celestial empire system where one of these Swiss nations was sort of the emperor 
error with all the other ones being its tributaries, this isn't present in this mod. Maybe it will be added in the future, who knows. And of course we can see Tyrol, a very very large nation, which doesn't start as being a nation in 1444 in vanilla EU4. They do have cores though, of course we all know. And like I said before, I'll say it again, these nations are part of Austria in vanilla EU4 in order to make Austria stronger, because we need a strong Austria as the emperor. Of course they all have von Habsburgs on their throne. And here is Austria, of course, with Passau having some enclaves in them, as well as Friesing, Schaumburg, and we have Bamberg having some provinces here. I already mentioned this in the previous video too. We can see all the different nations here. One thing that differs from this mod to Voltaire's New Nightmare is that there is border gore in this mod, but it's only border gore between nations. Whereas in Voltaire's New Nightmare, provinces were split up in hundreds of different little pieces, so this province would also have some land here, some land here, some land over here. So basically provinces were inside each other, that doesn't seem to be the case in this mod, but there is still so much border gore in this mod as well. It's still definitely very, very cursed, I have to say. And we can see all the tiny, tiny little nations here. Going into the culture map mode, we can see so French culture right here, and Breton is a part of the Celtic culture group, which also has Cornish, Welsh, Manch, you know, Highlander and Irish in it as well, which is very nice to see. And we can see all the different German cultures in this mod as well. And the Dutch have their own culture group once again. And there is another culture group which wasn't present in the previous mod. So this was part of the Italian culture, but I guess not in here. So we got Romanche, Ladin, and Friulian, which is their own culture group in this mod. Very interesting. Going over to North Germany, and we don't have that much border gore. Well, that's a lie. We can see Saxony right here, and tons of tiny nations in and around Saxony. Saxony. If you go into the trade map mode, we can see all the Hanseatic cities, which I already talked about. So these are cities with a very high trade power in this mod. Of course, they did exist historically. Moving further to the west, we can see some of the electors here. We got Koln, Cleves isn't an elector, but they are in U4. And tons and tons of nations, which increase the realism, which can of course, be present in U4 vanilla, at least not all of them. And when we zoom out, you can see a lot of nations that you do recognize from Vanilla U4. We got Trier right here, Munster of course, Bremen, which is a lot larger in this mod, Hamburg right here and right here, so they do have some provinces which are separated. And rivers do appear to be much bigger in this mod, so I wonder if ships could go through here. Although I don't see any ports on these provinces like we can see here. This is basically a port right here. And Holstein in this mod isn't represented as one nation but instead as two. Rendsburg and Schleswig. Schleswig is a junior partner of Rendsburg and they aren't under Denmark, which is very interesting to see. Moving over here, we have Brandenburg, of course, and the Teutonic Order. Teutonic Order sells Brandenburg, this province, in U4. We have all the Pomeranian nations, Wolgast, Stetten, Barth, Stolp, Kamen. I've never heard of this one personally. And looking at the trade situation, this is what it looks like in Germany. So we have tons of different trade nodes. Over here, Berlin is a very large trade node, as we can see, as well as Hanover. Now, these are, of course, very, very wealthy trade nodes. We can see that Amsterdam is an end node in this mod, where Whereas England doesn't have an end node. It flows from London to the Irish Sea to Cork to Lothian, which then in turn flows to Norway here and then to the Netherlands. I think this is much more accurate to give the Netherlands when they form such immense trade power having an end node. And I do think this is something that should be implemented in U4. Even though the English Channel is an end node in U4, I think there should be a separate one over here and a separate one over here and have the end node over here. A slight nerf to Great Britain, if you will. Going over to the Netherlands, we can see Brabant right here, which is of course in a personal union with Burgundy as well as Flanders and Holland. I wonder if Burgundy have any more subjects in this mod. No, they don't. They have Nevers and all the three personal unions, so it's the same pretty much. And we have the other Dutch nations over here, as you can see. And going into the culture map mode, we can see the different Dutch cultures. So we have Flemish, Brabantian, Dutch, and Frisian, of course. And in the regions, it's separated into Wallonia, Netherlands, Frisia, and all these other German border regions, as well as the French border regions here too. We can see quite a lot of border gore here so this is what i was talking about from Voltaire's new nightmare if i click here see this is one province this is part of a different province this is a third province this is a fourth one all the little province exclaves here and this is actually visible to this present day you've probably seen those images of little towns in belgium and the netherlands where the border goes through houses through shops through cafes basically half of your house is in belgium the other half is in the netherlands so i guess this is somewhat of a representation of that which is very cool to see now moving along because we don't have too much 
much time briefly we'll cover bohemia thank god not too much border gore here going on once again we have bohemia and moravia and all these silesian nations some of which are subjects of bohemia only two as we can see silesia which is right here and moravia they are junior partners and the rest of these nations are independent not too much border gore very nice to see moving along into the poland area we can see it's pretty familiar to us we do have poland right here they are guaranteeing moldavia again and they do have mazovia as a vassal as well as pluck which isn't present in vanilla eu4 we got lithuania here which has this nation as a subject as well as this other nation over here so these over here are actually independent nations but they all seem to be allied to lithuania so i wonder how that will work in this mod of course the borders once again very very accurate we do have slight border gore in the teutonic order with some provinces having ex-slaves but that doesn't seem to be the case in poland pretty nice oh I was wrong moving along moldavia is very well represented of course and volhynia here they're named volin of course you know them sometimes from you for all of these nations can pop out of lithuania or poland or the commonwealth when they collapse we also have transylvania as an independent nation in this mod so hungary doesn't own that part they do have croatia and slavonia as subjects as we can see and they do guarantee transylvania and we have some other nations here with that we don't know from you for like slavonia soli Privaya, another province right here we have zeta which is of course montenegro from u4 and the venice provinces as well as Ragusa right here. And this is a tiny little nation, Bolitska. They're a pirate republic, actually, so it would be very cool to play as a pirate republic. And if we go into the culture map mode, we can see the South Slavic culture. So we have Bulgarian right here, Serbian, Bosnian, Croatian, and Slovenian. And if we go into the regions, we can see the different regions here. In the Balkans, so we have Krain, which is basically Carniola in EU4. We have Illyria, which is basically Dalmatia, Croatia, Bosnia. We have this region right here as well, serbia you can see albania right here we'll get into that soon macedonia bulgaria right here and rumelia right here as well as thras and the Greek region so northern greece and greece and if we go into albania we can see all the different albanian nations so they aren't present as one nation the castrioti nation is the one where skanderbag is the ruler so that's this nation and they have this other nation as well as this one right here and this one right here we have another nation here which isn't present in you for lovech this seems to be a bulgarian nation of sorts which the ottomans haven't conquered yet speaking of the ottomans these are their balkan holdings as we can see byzantium is slightly larger over here as well as them having some islands over here but moria is independent in this mod so athens are a vassal of moria whereas epirus is a junior partner of cephalonia so byzantium doesn't have any subjects and they're allied with moria i think they're even weaker in this mod to be honest and if we zoom and we can see the detail on all these nations here we have the province of edirne of course the capital of the ottomans and we can see for example these two provinces in vanilla eu4 are more than a dozen provinces in this mod and going into the trade map mode, we can see all the different trade nodes over here in the balkans and we can see the tiny province of constantinople so it's named constantinopolis in this mod right here capital of byzantium of course 34 dev in 1444 and they have a level 4 fort by the way this mod does start in the year 1050 something so that's why they're miltech 48 or something i just opened the 1444 start date because it's the most familiar moving along quickly because we don't have too much time we can see all the detail here in the carpathian nations with lots and lots of nations that aren't present in eu4 so we can't even see georgia right here we do have shervan circassia some of these nations we know some of them we don't looking into the culture map mode we have lots of different culture groups so we have the armenian culture georgian azari and some of these north caucasian cultures and if we go into here and we look at these levant nations and we go into the simple terrain map mode we can actually see the extent of the provinces which only hug the rivers and the rest of it is wasteland very accurately depicted now if you start as this nation right here so the nation of Anisa, which is also present in vanilla eu4 i don't know what it would actually do there is no provinces around it do they have any more provinces no so what do you do if you start as this nation it's the same situation over here in egypt with provinces only being along the nile river very accurately depicted to be honest and more of these we can see even more of these nations that aren't connected to anything else even in north africa over here speaking of north africa here we can see some other nations along the course 
course they're hugging the coast and some nations that we already know like Togurt, Jirid, Mazab as well as Tunis right here. Tlemcen is a lot smaller and we have Morocco who have three subjects so Sousse, Marrakesh and Dra as well as some other independent nations over here and here we can see the culture map mode so we have all the different cultures. Back to Anatolia we have the Turkish Beyliks most of them are familiar to us. Genoa does have a province here which I didn't know about to be honest and we have another little Turkish Beylik here Alanya right here. We have Cyprus, the Knights, Genoa, Lesbos seems to be an independent nation or maybe they're actually a vassal of Genoa and another lordship over here who is a subject of Genoa. Even the Timurids are present in this mod although they're named Gurkhanian. I don't even know if they're the Timurids maybe it's a different nation please correct me if I'm wrong. And we can see the hordes too now going into the simple terrain map mode we can see this represented as impassable terrain basically wastelands once again so Nogai would be much much weaker than all the other nations. We can see the great horde and Kazan of course we know these are of course some sort of other tribal nations well at least these to. And we have Perm right here, which isn't connected to anything. And we can see all the different Russian principalities. Now, Muscovy seems to have a ton of subjects in this mod and an appendage. Now, this may be a new subject type, sort of similar to tributaries, I guess which is very cool to see. Provinces here are slightly larger, but still extremely detailed. And here we have Odoyev and other nations that are part of the Russian principalities, as well as Novgorod, we all know them. Moving into the Baltics, we have the Livonian Order and some other nations, which are all seems to be subjects of the Livonian Order. We have Gotland right here and Sweden, Denmark and Norway. Of course, Norway and Sweden aren't represented fully, but they did a good job on the lakes. Going into the trade map mode, we can see all the different trade nodes right here. And going into the culture map mode, we can see the West Slavic cultures right here, the Baltic cultures right here. These are the Finnish or Ugric cultures, as well as the Baltic cultures right here and the Scandinavian ones right here. Moving along to Great Britain, it's pretty much familiar. We have England, Scotland, Gaul right here as well as some as well as Orkney. Now Gaul is a subject of Scotland while this nation Orkney is a subject of Denmark and here we can see all the different Irish clans some of which are in U4 some of which are not but it would definitely be awesome to be playing in Ireland. We already showed off the culture map more for here. We can see the British cultures as well as the Celtic cultures right here and we have another culture here so this uh, uh, this clan has Norse Gaelic culture, which is part of the Nordic cultures, which is very cool to see. Now, I personally didn't know about that at all. Going into the super regions map mode, now this may be more familiar to you guys from U4. We have Iberia, France, Lotharingia. This isn't present in vanilla U4, of course. All the regions. Oh, actually we're in the super regions map mode so this might all seem familiar to you guys and going into the regions which we have already seen this is basically like areas from vanilla eu4 and then if we go into areas we have even more detail this is the full zoomed out version of the trade nodes map mode as we can see a ton a ton a ton of trade nodes and this is the culture map mode we can see the french celtic british iberian italian South Slavic, West Slavic, East Slavic cultures, Romanian as a separate culture group, as well as Hungarian, Turkish, all the Arab cultures, as well as some other cultures right here and right here. Going into the fort map mode, we can see how crazy the HRE and Ireland actually are. So almost every province in Ireland has a fort. Going into the development map mode and from this zoomed out view, we can see that North Italy, of course, has a high concentration of developed provinces, as well as the Netherlands right here and some other provinces scattered here and there. So this mod actually covers history from 1054 to 1871, so it's a much larger timeline than vanilla EU4. It adds hundreds of new countries, thousands of new provinces, 300, more than 300 unique national idea sets, 75 unique mission trees, and a lots of generic missions, tons and tons of historical flavor events, new cultures, new religions. Speaking of religions, we have Catholic right here, Hussite, Sunni right here, Orthodox, we have Bogomilist religion which is present in Bosnia, as well as some other religions which I personally haven't heard of like Kabze, um, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. New cultures, more government types, ages, institutions, tech, the Grand Principality of the Rus which works similarly to the Celestial Empire which is for the Russian nations right here, and tons of new disasters, buildings, ideas, decisions, trade goods and much more. So huge shout out to the devs, these are their names as you can see on this picture, so huge shout out to them. You can definitely check out this mod for yourself so you have something to do while you wait for Leviathan to be fixed in the next week or 
Chapter 2, so I'll definitely have a link to this mod down below in the description. And that's pretty much all I can cover for this video without getting into too much detail. Of course, this video would be like 3 or 4 hours long if I went into everything that this mod has to offer in detail. So if you want to check it out for yourself, please go ahead and do a huge shout out to these devs. Even though the title and the thumbnail said this mod needs to be stopped, of course, that's just because it's cursed, but it's also very, very much blessed. And that's pretty much it for this mod showcase. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. Only 10% of you are subscribed, so it will really mean a lot. And I've also launched channel memberships, so you can check out the join button down below if you want to support the channel with more than just subscribing. And join the Discord to chat with me, give me suggestions on videos, and much more. I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.